Hey everybody, welcome to part two of how to organize your Swift UI code. Here we go. All right, here we are, right where we left off last time. And this second video, this is part two. So if you haven't watched part one, jump over, watch part one, then come back and watch part two. This is part two. This is about extracting your views. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. All right, before we jump into this, I need to talk about a comment that was on the first video. This person said, you mentioned this was one way to do it, dot, dot, dot. You'll have to elaborate on the, quote, right way to do it, smiley face. Well, to elaborate on that, I'm going to say there isn't a right way to organize your code. Now, this view model approach has been recommended by Apple when you're writing Swift UI code, but that doesn't mean it's the only way or the right way. It just means, yeah, this is a good way to do it. So if you find a way that you enjoy better, or you find works better even, go for it. You can use whatever you want. All right, hope that helps. All right, let's jump right into this video. Now this is about view extraction. What do I mean by that? I mean consolidating this main body view by taking some of the views inside of it and moving their implementation details, or how they're made, outside of the body. This makes the main view body easier to read and makes your code more reusable. So there are three different ways of extracting views that I'm gonna teach you about in this video. And it's important to note, I personally use all three of these ways in every Swift UI project I work on. I don't just use a single way to do everything. So you'll see what I mean as we get into this. All right, the first way I extract views is using computed properties. Now, I use computed view properties when there are no arguments that I need to pass in. For example, let's create a little footer view for this list view. Not an actual official footer view per se, but something we're gonna put at the bottom of the view that won't scroll. All right, let's uh, embed this list in an H stack. Oh wait, a V stack. That was nice and easy to change. Cool, and inside this V stack, let's go ahead and put a text view like this. We'll say footer view. Now let's extract this footer view from here and create a private var, I'll say footer view, some view. Okay, I need to pause here for just a second and tell you that the reason I extracted this footer view and put it below the body view is because I want to keep it separate from the normal variables like the view model variable right there. And that's why. All right, back at it. Paste that right in there. Now I've got our footer view as a computed property, just like that. Resume the canvas, and you'll see it appear right over here at the bottom of the list. And let's give that some padding now. It looks like that. And just for fun, let's get rid of these lines in this list over here by turning this into a scroll view, like that. Now things are centered, so we can fix that. But that brings me to my next point, functions. Now this is the second way I extract views. Now let's go ahead and take this V stack out of here because that's what makes up this row right here, my name and Twitter handle. And I'll go ahead and command X and I'll come down here and I like to put my functions underneath my computer property. So I'll say private func and I will say row for person, person. And that's the type, if you remember, in our people view model, we have a nested struct called person which is the same person we've got right here in our for each. Okay, and this is going to return some view and we'll paste in our v stack, just like we had it up here. Then we can go up here and say self dot, and that's because we're in this closure, then say row for person and pass in that person right there. Now we'll resume the canvas over here and now we'll fix the alignment. All right, we'll come down to this v stack and we'll embed it in an h stack a little spacer here. That should push everything over to the left. And then we can give ourselves some padding right here too. And that fixes the issue right there. Perfect. Now we've extracted our footer view into a computed property. And we've extracted our row into a function. And that brings me to the third way of extracting views, which is using structs. Now I use a struct when I plan on using the view in more than just one screen of my app. This keeps design consistent across the entire app since you can modify the view in a single place and the changes reflect everywhere. 
that the view struct is being used. All right, now let's get going on this struct. I'm going to go ahead and hit Command Shift J to jump into the navigator where I'm at. Create a new file, Swift UI file. Let's call this header view. Give it a genericish name like that so it can be used everywhere. It's not called people header view. Okay, and now we have this text view. Let's go like this and say this header view will accept a title like that. We can just put it right here in this text view. Now, this isn't necessarily part of organization, this creating this view, so I'll create a little header view and fast forward through it and then explain it a little bit. Okay, here we go. Okay, now here is the header view I've created so far, but you're going to notice I'm going to use the computed property way of doing things again, right here. I'm going to create a little background view for this. All right, I've created this little background view, and I'm going to put it right here on my H stack. Background, background view. Now, like I said, this isn't part of organization, but this part is, right? I did another computed property. Let's go ahead and resume the canvas, because now we're in our own struct for this view, so we can see what it looks like right here. Let's close that navigator. Cool, there is our header view. Now, don't get confused. This may look like a navigation bar thing, but this is just for this video. Okay, let's swipe back over to our people view and use it right here in this vstack. We'll say header view, open it up like that, title, let's give it a title like this. Hey, that's pretty neat. Now we can clean up a little bit like this and actually make this go above the status bar here by going to the vstack and saying edges ignoring safe area top. Hey, that looks cool. One more cool thing. Let's go like this instead and say people count and we'll go ahead string interpolation and say view model people count all right now those are the three ways computed properties functions and structs i hope this was helpful for you if you liked it like it if you like like liked it consider subscribing and if you loved it consider subscribing all right hope you turn into the next video turn in i hope you tune in to the next video We'll talk about folders, not necessarily folders, but groups, but not groups like SwiftUI groups, groups like in your navigation. You'll see. And also, why I name things the way I name them. Tune in next time. See you later.